Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and today I'll be making my first VGC 2020 rental team breakdown video. Now, the team I'm going to be talking about today I've already revealed to you guys in my Parish Trap tutorial video, which you should totally check out if you want to learn how to make a team like this. But today I'll be going in depth and teaching you how to play this team. The rental code for the team is going to be shown on screen for you all to use in game, and if you want to use it on Pokemon Showdown, the paste bin is also in the description down below. But before we get started, I want to remind you guys to check out my Twitch and Patreon page if you want to support the channel. Supporting me on Patreon will get you your name at the end of my videos and access to my Patreon-only team building live streams that I do every Saturday. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video at any point in time and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. You guys absolutely destroyed my like goal for the last video. I only asked for like 80, but you guys doubled it. I'm pretty sure we're about to reach 160. So I'll be a little bit more confident, but not too confident. Let's go for 120 likes on this video. I'd really appreciate that. It helps out the channel immensely. If we reach that, I'll make another one of these videos for a team I've been cooking up. The question of the day is, what's your favorite Gigantamax form? So be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. But with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Let's get started with a basic overview. This team is a Paris Trap team centered around Binding Band Gigantamax Sandaconda with a Trick Room option in Gigantamax Snorlax. Our trapping Pokemon are Gigantamax, Sandaconda, and Gothitelle. Our pair song user is Water Absorb Lapras, which also serves as a handy check to water types like Rotom Wash and Dracobish. Gigantamax Snorlax serves as a Trick Room Sweeper and alternative Dynamax option to Sandaconda in case we don't want to play a Parish Trap game. It also pairs well with Gothitelle, which prevents our opponent from switching into an Intimidator or a Fighting type that would otherwise check Snorlax. Arcanine is this team's fire type that can intimidate physical attackers, burn opponents, and roar out anything that wants to set up and sweep. Finally, Ferrothorn is an extremely bulky grass and steel type that can threaten water types like Gastrodon and Rotom Wash, while walling offensive threats like Duraludon and Excadrill with Leech Seed and Leftovers Recovery. Going in depth now, Sandaconda is running 252 HP, 212 attack, and 44 defense with an adamant nature. Its moveset is Drill Run, Glare, Protect, and Rock Slide. Its ability is Sand Spit, and its item is a Binding Band. Binding Band will increase the damage Pokemon trapped by a G-Max Sandblast take from 1 8th of their health to 1 6th. And when combined with Sandstorm damage, it will mean your opponents take 22% damage at the end of each turn. This puts them on a timer arguably on par with the danger that Parish Song offers. Every turn you decide to protect Sandaconda is another turn your opponent cannot switch and is forced to endure the damage. While four members of this team are prone to taking Sandstorm damage, those four are also holding Pinch Berries which activate at 25% health or lower. The Sandstorm chip damage will make getting into range of these berries much easier as it could just be a protect away. Sandaconda is specifically EV'd to counter beat up Whimsicott and Justified Lucario or Arcanine. Plus 4 Max Attack Jolly Lucario's close combat will only do 71% maximum to Sandaconda. And its plus 4 Max Skill Spike coming out from Meteor Mesh will only do 77.9% maximum. This means that Sandaconda will always win this encounter because G Max Sandblast has a 75% chance to one hit KO Dynamax Lucario. And if you get unlucky and Lucario ends up living the hit, the Sandtoon damage will guaranteed knock it out at the end of the turn. A similar calculation applies to Justified Arcanine, which only does 91.6% maximum with Max Flare coming off of Adamant Max Attack Flare Blitz. G-Max Sandblast does 88.5% maximum to the Dynamax Arcanine, meaning you can guarantee it goes down by clicking Max Guard on the following turn. Other Pokemon who drop to G-Max Sandblast are non-Dynamax Max HP Duraludon and Tyranitar. Dynamax Charizard also gets one hit KO'd by Max Rockfall, however, Sandaconda is significantly slower than it, so it'll be forced to take a hit prior. Modest Max Special Attack Charizard does 68% maximum to Gigantamax Sandaconda with Max Overgrowth coming off a of Solar Beam. However, if it's powered up by its ability Solar Power, Sandaconda has an 81.5% chance to live the Max Overgrowth and a 56.2% chance to live the Max Flare. If the Charizard is Timid Max Special Attack, Sandaconda will always live these hits even with Solar Power. When not Dynamax, Sandaconda is able to deal significant damage to Sand Teams with Drill Run. It one-shots Excadrill and two-shots Max HP Tyranitar. In fact, if you face 4 HP Tyranitar and Drill Run gets that high ratio crit, then Tyranitar will drop to a single attack. Glare has excellent speed control as it is 100% accurate and can even paralyze ground types. As an added benefit, because Parish Song determines who gets KO'd first by speed, if you paralyze your own teammate before Parish Song concludes, you'll be able to guarantee that they drop last, winning you the game. Finally, Rock Slide is an excellent coverage move to hit pesky flying types like Braviary, and even one-shot Charizard. When under Trick Room, or when paired with Glare to use on a paralyzed opponent, it can cause devastating flinches. Next up is Gothitelle. Gothitelle is running 252 HP, 172 defense, 84 special defense, and 0 speed IVs with a sassy nature. Its moveset is Fake Out, Psychic, Protect, and Trick Room. Its item is an Aya Papa Berry, and its ability is Shadow Tag. Gothitelle functions as the team's main trapping and speed control Pokemon. 
The Sandicana and Gothitelle lead is this team's bread and butter. It's safe versus most common leads such as Whimsicott plus a Justified Pokemon, Tyranitar plus Excadrill, and even Togekiss plus Dragapult. This thing is EV to live Modest Choice Spec Shadow Ball from Dragapult, and has a 93.5% chance to live Jolly Ficious Ren from Dracovish, meaning it can set up Trick Room very reliably. Versus Dragapult and Togekiss leads, it can either fake out the Togekiss while Sandaconda Sandblast the Dragapult, or even set up Trick Room to outspeed the next turn. On Whimsicott beat up leads, you can reliably fake out Whimsicott turn 1 and Sandblast the partner, since Whimsicott isn't likely to Dynamax. Gothitelle also pairs amazingly well with Snorlax. Fake Out makes getting Snorlax's Belly Drum off much easier, and Trick Room allows it to sweep through entire teams. You can also play some mind games after revealing Fake Out. Some opponents may try to predict the Fake Out plus Belly Drum, so you could risk a Belly Drum and Trick Room on the same turn to maximize the time you have to put out major damage. Shadow Tag on Gothitelle also prevents opponents from switching, meaning that combining it with Parasong from Lapras and playing Protects and Fake Outs appropriately can give you a 4-2 lead in just a few turns. Psychic is the final move that this Pokemon runs. It's purely there to help you pick up KOs on Pokemon that Sandaconda and Snorlax struggle with. It's also nice for dealing damage in case Gothitelle cannot use its support moves after a taunt. Lapras is this team's only Parish Song user, but it does its job very well. It runs a spread of 244 HP, 140 defense, and 124 special defense with a bold nature. Its moveset is Brine, Freeze Dry, Protect, and of course Parish Song. Its item is an Aguaberry, and its ability is Water Absorb. Lapras functions as a bulky water type that can switch in for Sandaconda and Arcanine on Ficious Rens from Dracovish and Hydro Pumps from Rotom Wash. It is EV to be 3 shot from Modest Max Special Attack Duraludon's Thunderbolt, and has the rest of EVs dumped into defense to ensure its longevity on the battlefield. Freeze Dry is a guaranteed 1 hit KO on 4 HP Dracovish and deals 32-43% to to Rotom Wash. Brine is also a great move for Lapras because it capitalizes on Sandaconda wearing down the opponents by dealing double damage to a Pokemon if it's at 50% health or below. Finally, Parasong serves as a win condition for the entire team. If you find yourself in a lead where your opponent only has two Pokemon remaining, you can click this move to ensure victory after a few smart protects and defensive switches. Even if you find yourself in a tied game where you lack the offensive power to KO your opponent's Pokemon, if either Lapras or its partner are slower than the opposing team, you can win by using Parish Song, as the order in which Pokemon get KO'd is determined by speed. That's all there really is to Lapras on this team, it serves a very basic role and completes a Fire Water Grass Core with Arcanine and Ferrothorn. Next up is the alternative Gigantamax option. Snorlax is running a spread of 244 HP, 12 attack, 252 defense, 0 speed IVs with a relaxed nature. Its moveset is Facade, Belly Drum, Protect, and Darkest Lariat. Its item is a Wiki Berry, and its ability is Gluttony. Gigantamax Snorlax may just be one of the most threatening Pokemon on this team, if not the entire metagame. Its max move, G-Max Replenish, has a significant chance to restore the berries of not only Snorlax, but its partners. This makes for great comeback potential, as Lapras, Arcanine, and Gothitelle all benefit from this. Its ability Gluttony makes its berry proc at 50% health instead of 25%, so when it goes for Belly Drum, it will immediately get 33% of its health back. Along with that, once it Dynamaxes, it will be able to live a plus 6 G-Max Replenish from opposing Snorlax, taking only 83% maximum. G-Max Replenish from this Pokemon will one-hit KO just about everything that doesn't resist the hit. And while Facade does underwhelming damage at first, if you get statused in any way by an opponent trying to stop plus 6 Snorlax from sweeping them, Facade will double in base power, becoming even stronger than G-Max Replenish. Darkest Lariat functions as a coverage move to hit Steel and Rock types that resist Facade, and deal super effective damage against Ghost types like Dragapult. It ignores the opponent's stat boost as well, so if you face Evasion or Iron Defense Pokemon, they should be no issue at all. Just to show how disgustingly bulky this thing is, I want to show you this calculation. Plus 4 Jolly Lucario's Close Combat only has a 75% chance to one-shot Snorlax once it's Dynamaxed. Once again, a pretty basic Pokemon, but Snorlax fills a very specific role on this team as a Trick Room Offense alternative playstyle. The fifth member of this team is Arcanine. Arcanine runs a spread of 132 HP, 172 Special Defense, and 204 Speed with a Jolly Nature. Its moveset is Flare Blitz, Will-O-Wisp, Protect, and Roar. Its item is Figgy Berry, and its abilities Intimidate. Arcanine is specifically EV to live a high horsepower from Adamant Excadrill, then proceed to outspeed it and either one-hit KO it with Flare Blitz or burn it with Will-O-Wisp. Arcanine also counters Ferrothorn and has a 68.5% chance to live Hydro Pump from Timid Max Special Attack Rotom Wash. Arcanine is excellent versus Hyper Offense Sand Team that expect Arcanine to drop to a single hit, as well as Trick Room Offense. It can spread burn to both Rhyperior and Snorlax to cut their attack stats in half, and it also has the option to roar out Snorlax, the turn it goes for Belly Drum, or prevent Trick Room altogether by roaring out the setter. Roar can also be used to stop setup Pokemon in general, or force your own Pokemon out in case of a Paris Trap Mirror Match. 
Arcanine is useful in nearly every match you encounter in this metagame, so I highly recommend you consider it before playing against any team. The final member of this team is Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn runs a spread of 252 HP, 4 defense, and 252 special defense, with 0 speed IVs and a sassy nature. Its moveset is Gyro Ball, Power Whip, Protect, and Leech Seed. Its item is Leftovers, and its ability is Iron Barbs. Ferrothorn is this team's special defensive wall that can stall out Pokemon that would otherwise cause issues. It's able to take a Mystical Fire from Fairy types that attempt to counter it. It only takes 79.5% maximum from Modest Max Special Attack Gardevoir Sacred Fire, so it can one-shot it back with Gyro Ball. It even has an 81.5% chance to live plus 6 max attack G-Max Replenish from Snorlax, meaning that playing Protect Sprite can help you stall out the 3 turns of Gigantamax. Because of how specially defensive it is, it can hardwall Duraludon and stall to death with Leech Seed. This Pokemon has great longevity which is essential to playing Paris Trap effectively, and it rounds out this team as a vital member. Finally I want to talk about some specific matchups and what you should bring to each one of them. Against Whimsicott Offense, I highly recommend bringing Sandaconda and Gothitelle as a lead to get rid of the Justified user turn 1. Because Whimsicott is likely to go down the next turn, you should bring Lapras in the back and Parish Song as a win condition. Your final pick will be any one of the three, depending on what the team looks like. If you see a Duraludon, definitely bring Ferrothorn. If you see a Ferrothorn or major physical threat like Snorlax, bring Arcanine. And if the rest of the team looks pretty frail, you can bring Snorlax as your best bet. Versus Sand, you should once again lead with Gothitelle and Sandaconda. Fake Out is great for stopping Tyranitar, and Sandaconda can deal with Excadrill pretty handily. Alternatively, you have the option of setting up Trick Room to stop Excadrill from going first. Ferrothorn is essential to beating Sand Offense because it walls both Excadrill and Tyranitar barring superpower on the Tyranitar. The final Pokemon you should bring is dependent on whether or not they have a Dracovish. If they do, always bring Lapras as it is immune to Ficious Rend. If they have a Ferrothorn, always bring Arcanine. If they have both, they're more likely to bring Dracovish instead of Ferrothorn because Arcanine discourages Ferrothorn from coming out. Versus Rain Offense, you should always lead with Gothitelle and Snorlax. Rain teams are notoriously fast, so Trick Room is excellent counterplay. The two you'll have in the back will always be Ferrothorn and Lapras because they hardwall everything Rain can throw at them. This is undoubtedly the team's easiest matchup. Versus Trick Room Offense, you should bring Sandaconda and Gothitelle as a lead. While Gothitelle cannot fake out anything if Ndidi sets up Psychic Terrain, Sandaconda can one-shot Ndidi and Gothitelle can reverse the Trick Room the turn it goes up. If their Trick Room setter is Hatterene, it will drop to the combination of the previous turn's Sand Tune damage and this turn's Sand Blast. In the back, you should always bring Arcanine to burn and intimidate Trick Room Sweepers like Snorlax and Rhyperior, as well as roar out the Snorlax in the turn it decides to Belly Drum. The final member of the team should either be Snorlax to discourage them from setting up Trick Room or take advantage of it, or Ferrothorn to wall physical attackers and Leech Seed stall while taking advantage of the Trick Room they may have set up. Finally versus the Dragapult and Togekiss lead, you can either lead off with Gothitelle and Sandaconda, or Gothitelle and Snorlax. Belly Drum is essentially free as neither Togekiss or Dragapult can deal too much damage to Snorlax, and Trick Room should be easy to set up as Gothitelle is guaranteed to live Shadow Ball from Dragapult. Be cautious about Fake Out though, if Togekiss decides to Dynamax it's going to be a waste of turn since you can't flinch it. In the back you should typically run Arcanine to generally support the team with Intimidate and Will-O-Wisps, and Ferrothorn to beat Pokemon like Gyarados or Rotom Wash. But that's pretty much everything you had to know about the team. I know this was a really long breakdown, but I wanted to give you guys all the information you needed to use the team effectively, and to be honest, making this video is probably going to help me play the team better since teaching something is the best way to test your knowledge. Let me know what you guys think about the team in the comment section down below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Also consider supporting me on Patreon to see your name at the end of my videos and have access to my Patreon only team building and testing streams every Saturday. And be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video at any point in time, and subscribe to the channel to keep up with me. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.